For the first time in history, average Americans have less education and are less prosperous than their parents. The era of greed and irresponsibility on Wall Street and in Washington has led us to a financial crisis as serious as any that we faced since the Great Depression. When the financial crisis struck just before the 2008 election, Barack Obama pointed to Wall Street greed and regulatory failures as examples of the need for change in America. A lack of oversight in Washington and on Wall Street is exactly what got us into this mess. After taking office, President Obama spoke of the need to reform the financial industry. We want a systemic risk regulator, increased capital requirements. We need a consumer financial protection agency that we need to change Wall Street's culture. But when finally enacted in mid-2010, the administration's financial reforms were weak. And in some critical areas, including the rating agencies, lobbying, and compensation, nothing significant was even proposed. Addressing Obama and quote, regulatory reform, my response, if it was one word, would be, ha, there's very little reform. How come? It's a Wall Street government. Obama chose Timothy Geithner as Treasury Secretary. Geithner was the president of the New York Federal Reserve during the crisis, and one of the key players in the decision to pay Goldman Sachs 100 cents on the dollar for its bets against mortgages. When Tim Geithner was testifying to be confirmed as Treasury Secretary, he said, I have never been a regulator. Now that said to me, he did not understand his job as president of the New York Fed. The new president of the New York Fed is William C. Dudley, the former chief economist of Goldman Sachs, whose paper with Glenn Hubbard praised derivatives. Geithner's chief of staff is Mark Patterson, a former lobbyist for Goldman. And one of the senior advisors is Louis Sachs, who oversaw Tricadia, a company heavily involved in betting against the mortgage securities it was selling. To head the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, Obama picked Gary Gensler, a former Goldman Sachs executive who had helped ban the regulation of derivatives. To run the Securities and Exchange Commission, Obama picked Mary Shapiro, the former CEO of FINRA, the investment banking industry's self-regulation body. Obama's chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, made $320,000 serving on the board of Freddie Mac. Both Martin Feldstein and Laura Tyson are members of Obama's Economic Recovery Advisory Board. And Obama's chief economic advisor is Larry Summers. The most senior economic advisors are the very people who were there who built the structure. Don't was that Summers and Geithner were going to play major roles as advisors first. Uh, I knew this was going to be status quo. The Obama administration resisted regulation of bank compensation, even as foreign leaders took action. I think the financial industry is a service industry. It should serve others before it serves itself. In September of 2009, Christine Lagarde and the finance ministers of Sweden, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Italy, Spain, and Germany called for the G20 nations, including the United States, to impose strict regulations on bank compensation. And in July of 2010, the European Parliament enacted those very regulations. The Obama administration had no response. Their view is, this is a temporary blip, and things will go back to normal. And that is why I am reappointing him to another term as chairman of the Federal Reserve. Thank you so much. Ben. In 2009, Barack Obama reappointed Ben Bernanke. Thank you, Mr. President. As of mid-2010, not a single senior financial executive had been criminally prosecuted or even arrested. No special prosecutor had been appointed. Not a single financial firm had been prosecuted criminally for securities fraud or accounting fraud. 